I don't know what it is with Nintendo, but somehow they know how to create an IP that turns me off, but then completely turns the table later down the road. What the fuck is ARMS? Is what I often question during its reveal. At first I thought it was some soccer bopper type shit, but clearly that observation was some garbage. Eight months ago they revealed Min Min and I knew instantly that she was the one. Anyone getting hungry? I wish my arms were made of noodles. Sorry, I lost myself there for shit, a second. I wanna <clears throat> slurp her up too. Next up is the, the enthusiastic man? Spring Man! Now, I don't know how far this game will go competitive-wise, however, I will say that the idea of this is quite the odd one, and I think ARMS has potential of going down as one of Nintendo's most iconic IPs, personally. This game is pretty bullshit because of the brain-dead cucks on ranked, but it's still somewhat satisfying grabbing and beating the shit out of my opponent, especially when fighting this dumbass mummy. Seriously, if you play this dead piece of shit, drink the finest Clorox. My only issue or nitpick with the game is that I wish that certain arms were exclusive to certain characters as they're revealed in the trailers, which would make them more unique instead of just their quirk or ability. Other than that, arms is cool. The next game's Cuphead. I actually did a reviewish type of video on it, so go check that out when you're done with this. This game was certainly different, and considering that I don't play running guns like that, the experience was extremely experimental while also challenging, cause this game would sometimes make me think that I progressed on a boss or something and BAM I die. I don't want to dive too deep into it, but pretty much you're playing as cups and you have to collect soul contracts. The story's mad captivating if you ask me, and I just overall love how Cuphead takes elements from 1920 to 1930s cartoons and meshes it into a game. What you're playing here is essentially a cartoon and it's great. I also believe that this game is the exact personification of trial and error. You ever feel for androids? That pretty much sums up Nier Automata. The game has multiple endings, the two main characters, 2B and Ninus, are mad lovable as well as others I won't mention. You handle a bunch of quests to get upgrades and to progress through the story, and man, let me tell you, Nier Automata is something else, man. You got the platforming sections, the hacking sections, the addictive combat in general. It's all over the place, but not in the sense of losing its identity. I don't know, everything just meshes well, creating such a versatile game that really captures the, again, personification of what technologically advanced shit androids can do. It's beautiful, honestly. This next game was a no-brainer, but goddamn, I enjoyed the hell out of the Insane Trilogy, and 100% in all three games on stream was quite the experience since it doesn't play exactly like the Naughty Dog games, so it was somewhat refreshing. Honestly, if you ask me, Crash 1's the most distinctive one out of the three simply due to how much tweaking it needed to, well, actually be playable alongside the other two. I'll be honest, I didn't really want a trilogy remaster, I wanted a new game. However, I am incredibly grateful for the Insane Trilogy and with the success of it, as well as the merchandise, it's safe to say that the future for Crash is looking bright. If fans don't make history repeat itself, that is. Which is still happening, by the way. Hat Kid is an alien trying to go back home, but she has to deal with a girl with a mustache and mafia members as well as other things. She's amazing. A Hat in Time just released on PlayStation 4 and I am beyond excited to play it on console whenever I get the chance. I did a somewhat review of this game on my channel, so you guys can go check it out, because that video actually summarizes why I love the game so much. The worlds are pretty expansive and honestly breathtaking, I'm talking near out of model levels, and no, not because of the graphics, but just because of how much there's so much to do, and I am dead serious when I say this, if a hat in time was somehow or somewhat released on the GameCube or PS2, I'd actually get a copy. It'd be like a reversal fashion of determining how the game's a gem, which I think it is regardless, but if it were released on a 6th generation console, that would be hilarious. For 30 bucks, the game's definitely worth it. 